verse 1a. This really goes with chapter 13, and it says simply, make love your aim. Everybody repeat after me. Make love your aim. Amen. That's, this is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Are you here with me? Let's pray. God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord, for bringing me a mighty long way. Yeah. Thousands of miles through the air, through the streets of Chicago and New York. Yeah. You have brought me back home, home to the house of God. Yeah. God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Your faithful God. Yeah. Your mighty God. Your wonderful God. God, we just say hallelujah. Yeah. Now, Lord, it's time for your word. Fill the preacher that he may preach. Fill the people that they may hear. And let none leave like they came in. Speak to every heart, soul, mind, and body. Heal the sick through your word. Lift the down spirit through your word. Encourage the broken heart through your word. Let us all leave here ready to share what you have given us in this moment right now. This is your moment. Take over. Glorify yourself and magnify yourself. Yes. God, we won't get in the way. We'll give you the praise and glory and the honor. In the name, above every name, the mighty master's name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. God's people said it. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, thank God you're here, neighbor. Thank God you're here. Tell them you being here makes church better. You being here makes church better. Tell them neighbor, there is a word from the Lord. The word of the Lord this morning. Is adventures in love. Look at somebody else and say, Oh, you're here today. Say, How delightful. See, we ain't used to talking to each other like that. We talk hard to each other. But, but let's make it nice. I'm say, How delightful that you're here today. Tell them I'm glad to see you. Tell them, Seeing you is like water in the desert. Tell them, Neighbor, there is a word from the Lord. Word of the Lord this morning, for this afternoon, is adventures in love. Amen. Don't touch it. Just wave at him. Amen. And take your seat. What did I say the title was? The Word of the Lord on the last Sunday of Women's History Month. Come on. Wait a minute. All the men, stand up. All the men. It ain't a lot of us, but we're powerful. Let's give these women a big hand. To bow, bow down to the women, amen. Not all the way, just bow to the women as a sign of respect, a sign of honor, amen. Women, we honor you today. We respect you today. We love you today, amen. Now, women, you can give yourselves a big hand, because you know what you did. The last Sunday of Women's History Month, and the word of the Lord is make love your aim. I looked at different versions, you know how I do. When you study, you get different versions. And I went to the Hebrew and Greek interlinear version, which deals with the actual Greek words. And it uh, rendered this verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 1a, like this. Pursue love. Everybody said, pursue love. Pursue love. Then I went to Kasia Thakri's version. You heard Kasia singing. She brought, I call it Casillas version because she brought it in the church. She didn't edit it and stuff, but she brought it to the church. It says, let love be your highest goal. Mm. Everybody agree that to me. Let love, let love be your highest goal. Be your highest goal. Mm -hmm. Then I went to a version Sister Goodman gave me called the easy to read version. And it said, love should be the goal of your life. Everybody said that to me. Love, love should be the goal, be the goal of, your life. of your life. And as we close out Women's History Month, I'm talking to every woman here, every woman who will watch, and I want you to give this to 20, 30 people, everyone who will get it. I want you to take notes on it. I'm talking to every woman. I'm talking to every woman that's hungry for love. You heard me right. I said hungry for love. I'm talking to every woman that's filled with burning desires for intimacy and sexual pleasure. Oh, somebody said, did he say that? I sure did. I'm talking to every woman that's filled with burning desire for intimacy and sexual pleasure. 
One time I was talking to one of the young members of our church, and she said, well, I was taught that sex was bad. And I said, who taught you that? She said, my pastor. I said, what pastor is that? She said, you. It's like a train hit me. So I want to come and talk on the other side today. I want to get on the other side. Because when God made everything, what did God say? It's good. I saw a comedian once, he said, when God invented sex, he said, he told the angels, he said, now, nah, they were putting in nerve endings. He said, when they got to the human sexual anatomy, he said, put in a lot of nerve endings. <laughs> put in a lot of nerve endings. He said, no, put some more in there. Put some more in there. He said, no, it's not enough. Put some more in there. And they said, Father, why are we putting all the nerve endings in this part? He said, because this part of the human being, I want to be so good that it'll make them call my name. <laughs> Oh, somebody here bless me, but I'm going for it. I'm talking to every woman filled with burning desires for intimacy and sexual pleasure. But I want you to come back to the sermon. Don't be lost. <laughs> and the intimacy and sexual pleasure. I'm talking to every woman that's hurt but hopeful. Every woman that's been hurt but hopeful. The word of the Lord today is make love your aim. The word of the Lord is let love be your highest goal. Word of the Lord today is love should be the goal of your life. I agree with the great Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. He wrote a sermon, and then he wrote a book called The Strength to Love. And in that sermon, he talks about the three kinds of love. I'm sure you've heard this uh, in the Greek language. The Greek language, uh, like many languages, like English, also has uh, uh, different words that give different dimensions of the concept. So for the word love, that we translate love, he lifts up three Greek words. Uh, number one, philo, which is the love of a friend. And we talked about that last week. And then he lifts up eros, which is sexual love, physical passion, that I just referred to that made somebody smile so hard when I said amen. I've seen some smiles I've never seen before in this church. Then he said, there's another kind of love beside Philo, friend love, eros, physical passion. There's a God love, and that is the love for humanity. And he talked about what he was doing. He was doing it out of a God love, a love for humanity, all of humanity. I just those that look like us and those that we like. I agree with Dr. King, but I would go further than that and say beyond all of these is the love of God. Make the love of God your aim. Let being filled with the love of God, as it says in Romans 5, it says God pours his love in our heart. Let God pour his love in your heart and let him pour it so much till it fills the whole heart. All the cracks of bitterness, all the cracks of unforgiveness, all the cracks of resentment, all the cracks of hurt. Let God pour that love into your heart until you're so full of love that it just starts overflowing out of you. Let the love of God be the goal of your life. And then you'll be blessed. Women's History Month, what a great month it's been. In the last week of the month, next to the last week, we witnessed in our nation the confirmation hearing of Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. She's the first black woman nominated to be on the highest court in the nation. I was somewhere, somebody said, they elected a black woman to be on the Supreme Court. I said, not yet. She's just been in, she's just been nominated by the president, and she's had confirmation hearings. But we watched her show her intelligence, her competence, her composure, and her determination in the face of Republican politicians, all of them white who insulted and bullied her, yes. who attacked her record, mm -hmm. who tried to get her to be upset, who asked her questions that had nothing to do with what she was there for yeah. because they are upset because right. a black woman is about to get on the Supreme Court. Right. Yeah. The nation, part of the nation, is so sick with racism that when Barack Obama was elected, they went crazy. Yeah. 
Right. And they elected an incompetent man, mm -hmm. immoral man, mm -hmm. to be their leader because he knew how to feed their racism. Mm -hmm. And this man still holds sway over the Republican Party, and that's why they weren't really concerned to make any kind of point except to whip up people who don't want to see black people in the highest office in the land. But when God is for you, God is more than the whole world that he is against you. So they, they, they tried to blame her for saying America is a racist nation while acting racist towards her. You gotta be careful, sick people. Uh -huh. Sick people are so messed up, they'll make you question yourself. Oh, uh, y'all ain't listening. It was racist because she was black, and sexist because she's a woman. But how many of y'all know, can't nobody stop God when God is on the I was getting ready last night, I saw a, a, a title of an article, you know how if you get news on your phone to show you title. And I didn't read the article. Because I, I didn't watch the, the, the show, amen, because I've been reading about white supremacy and white racism a long time. I know what it does. I've been fighting it in this city a long time. I know what it is. And so I didn't feel necessary to watch every now and then. Uh, I see a clip of her, and uh, I saw her biting her lip. I saw her doing this. And I was so happy that Senator Cory Booker stood up to defend her. That was a great moment. And I know all of you, like me, were praying for her. But I know because of her background and what she's been through, it's not the first time she's been attacked. She's been attacked, but still, the article said, Katanji <laughs> Brown Jackson is the most popular Supreme Court justice in the last 50 years. What they thought they were pouring on her to make her uh, 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 upset, and to put her down. Instead, they made her the most famous and most popular uh, Supreme Court justice uh, that's come forth in the last 50 years. Still shows us how racist America is. And some of you young people, you've been listening to music and you've been doing things. You ought to pay attention. You're still in an extremely racist country. And they can't say it because they're politicians. But I say it, America is a racist country. That's not all America is, okay? And America has some, a, a lot of things too, but it is a racist country. And we don't even have to go into it. I think the argument is self-evident. But we're also a country that does not want to see itself. We want to pretend to be righteous while doing very wicked things. Yeah. If someone points out our wickedness, usually they get killed for yeah. Oh, y'all don't know that. It shows us, young people, you need to see the way that they attack. Now imagine. Here's a woman who was a judge. Here's a woman that's been to the top schools in the country. Here's a woman that's been nominated by the president. And they disrespected her, wouldn't let her talk, cut her off, ask her stupid questions trying to make her mad. If they do that to her in front of the whole country, what do you think they'll do to you? Yeah. Oh, help me, hold on. So when you get attacked, and you get attacked with racism, you get attacked, don't go crazy. But as the old man used to tell me, be cool. <laughs> That's what she did. She, she's cool. Because she know what really matters is not this nonsense you're asking me about. What matters is the vote. And in the vote, she's going to prevail. And so they could not stop her. Listen, you got to understand, just because you're in the will of God, let me hell is going to start clapping. That's right. That's right. Did you somebody to get me? Right. Just because you're in the will of God, doing what God wants you to do, don't ever think hell is going to stop clapping. No, hell is going to attack you. Yes, and you should expect to be attacked. Yes. And when the attack comes, hallelujah, you don't freak out. You stay focused on the Lord. Yes. You remember what the book of Hebrews says, uh, having your eyes fixed on Jesus, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame to sit down at the right hand of the throne of God in Hebrews chapter 12 and 1. You stay focused and you keep looking at God. Yes. But I tell you this, and history shows this, there is no force in the universe that will stop the rise of the black queen yes. around this world. Yes. 
There is no racist, there is no killer, there is no ignorant man, there is no hating woman that can stop the march of the black queen. But God has ordained. Oh, y'all ought to be telling yourself. But I understand. You don't know. You haven't been told that you're a queen. If you're a black queen, you have to explain it. You have to receive it. You have to believe it and know that no devil in hell can stop you. Y'all still looking at me like I'm crazy. Look at your head and say, you must not understand what a black queen is. If you're a woman, say, here's one right in front of you. None of these Republican people that will go down into the dustbin of history be able to stop this black queen from ascending to what God has ordained. Woo! What a month this has been. End of Women's History Month. What? It's been a great month. Because of my mother's sickness, I've seen her more in the last two weeks than I have been in the last two years. She's coming along. She's very weak. Lost a lot of weight. You wouldn't recognize her. Uh, because of her sickness, but it's been quite a month. What a month! We celebrated the departure of Deacon Page, yes. and then we welcomed Carol Goodwin as the new Sis yes. Ministry yes. Woman. What a month! Before the month is over, the scaffolding will come down. I see a lot of it getting ready to dismantle it and take it down. We have made sure that. If Jesus does not come, the Lord Jesus does not come back, this building will not fall apart. And the uh, great vision of Deacon Michelle Robinson. Deacon Michelle Robinson came up with a plan. We've been talking about uh, pointing these bricks for years. But it took a woman to come up with a plan to find the people, yeah. to do the uh, management, yeah. to get the job done. Yeah. And then before the month is over, the scaffolding will be down, our cross will be shining, our building will be complete. <laughs> we ought to give God a big hand. We asked you for membership for $75,000 and you gave almost $100,000. We ought to give God a big hand. Completion and hallelujah, God got it done through her. So I, I went a couple of places and somebody said, Tell her, I see you got people working on your building. I said, Sure, who? <laughs> they said, What you doing? I said, I'm keeping it from shaking apart from the highway. And they said, Oh, and I, they said, Tell her, that's a great work. I said, Sure, it. And they said, You're doing, you're doing great over there, Tell her. I said, Thank you. And I said, But it really wasn't me. All I did was go in the building and preach. It was one of my deacons, Deacon Michelle Robinson, who came up with the plan. Amen. Sometimes pastors get blamed for stuff they didn't do, but sometimes they get credit for stuff that they didn't really get to do either. So I want to give the Bible saying, give everybody their due. I want to give the credit where the credit is due. When God wanted to redo this building, make sure it wouldn't crumble, make sure the cross, cross was ready to fall off and knock somebody in the head. That did not happen. It was actually done, not because of me. But it was done because of a woman, Deacon Michelle Robinson. Let's give her a big hand to her. So the question is, how do we close this great month? Oh my God. Well, we're going to close talking about three women very quickly. How many women did I say? Three. We're going to talk about three women. How many women did I say? Three. And uh, it involves you to go and do some homework. How many of you all went and looked up in the sky, looked at the stars? I told you that your home. How many of you? Only one person, only two people did it. Amen. Three, okay. Amen. Remember, I gave you homework assignment. I told you to go out and look up in the stars. Amen. And see the glory of God. The firmament is telling the glory of God. Well, I want you to give you another homework assignment. Go home, read the whole book of Ruth in a common English version. Not King James. Because you won't, you'll get lost in King James. Read it in the RSV, the NIV, the New Living Translation, the Passion Tradition. Uh, what's that version you use, Pamela? The Messenger. You read it in the Messenger. Read it in, in some, some other translation. Read it in um, J.B. Phillips, the Christian Standard. You can use any language. Because I want you to get the story 
and get what happened. So when the Lord told me the title, the Lord told me the title first, Adventures in Love, I said, oh, and he told me what to say. You need to know everything I said. I prayed, and the Lord told me to say all that stuff I said about burning sex and desire and all that. God told me to say that. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. So I said, well, Lord, what, what else? He said, go back to Ruth. I said, well, I'm preaching that word last Sunday. He said, you think you finished? I said, okay, Lord. And the Lord said, you missed the part. I said, I did. I said, okay. He said, go back and read it again. And I read it. He said, you missed something. This is what I meant. Ruth follows Naomi's plan. Mm -hmm. yeah. Once Naomi found that by the providence of God, Ruth was picking up wheat in Boaz's field, yeah. Naomi came up with a strategy. Yeah. You need a strategy. Yeah. Now when you get a strategy, everything in your strategy is not going to work out right. like you want to, but don't give up strategy. Y'all help me preach. Look at somebody and tell me, you need a strategy. Look at somebody tell me, you need a strategy. Now, the great Mike Tyson said that everybody got a strategy until they get punched in the mouth. <laughs> if you ever seen his fights, you'll understand. But just because life punches you in the mouth, don't give up on your strategy. That's right. Naomi came up with a strategy. Naomi told Ruth, Go back and read it. I'm not, we're not, I'm not going to tell you to read it right now. She said, girl, wash yourself. Yeah. Wash yourself. Mm -hmm. Then she said, put on perfume. Uh -huh. Anoint yourself. That's right. and she said, put on beautiful clothes. Mm -hmm. Remind me of a record. It's hard to be record I like. But the man said, fix your hair. Fix your nails. Yeah. Come out looking good. And he said, good. That's what Naomi was telling you. Fix your head. She didn't say it, but I, I said, fix your nails. Put it, put, get it good. Put the cream on to make your skin shine. Put the stuff on to make your head look. Get yourself looking the best you can. Come out looking good. And she said, go to that, to that barn-like structure where Boaz is threshing. See, they would work all night with the wheat. In order to protect the wheat, the owner would sleep in there. Yeah. Well, she knew Boaz would be asleep. Everybody knew, so the thieves knew too. And she said, go in there while they're sleeping, looking good. And walk up to him. Wait till he lay down. And walk up to him. And go to the end of where he is. Uncover his feet uh -oh. and then lay down. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> now I'm puzzled over this. I didn't know what the uncovering the feet meant. So I went to bed one night, turned the sheet on, took my socks off, <laughs> went to sleep. And I found out that when your feet is down warm, you'll wake up. You don't believe you go on try. Right. Look at somebody and say, try. Right. Right. Look at somebody and say, you do it tonight. Science experiment, try. Right. So the Bible says, boy, I had to work hard, and there was a festival going on. And that's another reason why he said, he, he, during the festival, you have to be careful. People drinking, somebody might come in and steal stuff. There's a festival going on. So he drunk, he ate, and he watching his work progress, and then he just laid down. In this barn like structure called a threshing floor. That's right. And then here she come. Fine looking girl. Yeah. Oiled up. Yeah. Had deep. Yeah. Sleeping. She crept up. Old boy. Read the book. Uncovered his feet. Right. He ain't wake up. But in the middle of the night, something happened. Maybe a breeze from the Lord. He woke up and he looked and behold, a fine young woman at his feet. He said, Hey, now what you doing here? She said, I'm Ruth. I'm Naomi's relative. I'm married. Ruth said, Who 
jacket is that? Come here. Can you get the floor for lay down? Yes. <laughs> come on, come bring that. Bring the jacket. She said, what happens? Lay your skirt over me. Go back. People didn't get it. No, come back. Come back. People didn't get it. She sat up like this. Turned so her good side was looking at her. Because y'all women know how you do. You know, you know where your good side is. And I'm like, you know you know. And I know you know. And God know you know. She said, Boaz, lay your skirt over me. Let's get digging, Jimmy Oliver's <laughs> To lay your skirt over someone meant to marry them. Amen. She said, because you're the nearest of kin. Emelech is dead, his two sons are dead, you're next. Marry me. That's what I meant. Now, the interesting thing is, when you go read the Bible, Naomi didn't tell Ruth to say anything. She just told her to go in there, uncover his feet, and lay down. Ruth put her own element in the strategy. She did her own thing. She didn't wait for Boaz to find her. She found him. I can say it again. She didn't wait for Boaz to find her. She found him. I try to say it the same way. Are y'all listening to me? I have been preaching. For 40 years, I have never picked that up. I preached about Ruth last Sunday. Didn't mention it. I preached about Ruth in different places. I've gone to women's days, preached for women. I've gone to youth days, preached about Ruth. I never picked it up. The Lord says, see, you've been missing this because you didn't read it carefully. That's right. But the Lord said, you got it now. Go in there and preach this. That's right. Now, Boaz looked at Ruth and said, girl. He said, you all right. He said, you could have, fine as you are, you could have went out and got any young man to marry you. That's right. But you came to me, an old cotcher. Man, that's not in the Bible, that's just a tale of this year. And he said, God is going to make the latter better than the former. You did a great thing when you told Naomi, where you go, I'm going to go. Yeah. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. Where, I die, where you die, I'll be buried. You did a great thing then. But girl, you're working it right now. Mm -hmm. And he said, listen. He said, I'm not the nearest of kin. Somebody nearer than me. Mm -hmm. And I got to go ask him. But if he don't do it, if he won't, baby, I will. He said, now, girl, we get excited. We didn't say that. That's me thinking about what happened. If that happened to me. That ain't in the Bible. Let me just make that. He said, go on over there and lay down. He said, I don't want you going out in the night. Might be some morales. They didn't have no street lights. They had no, no, no lights, no guards, no, no nothing. It was that, if any of you've been down south and you was in that black, black dark, where you can't see your hand, it was that kind of dark. He said, he said, lay down. And he said, now, nah, in the morning, and then he said, you go back in the morning. In the morning, he woke up, they woke up real early because he wanted her to go out. He didn't want people to know she had been coming in there creeping. <laughs> Look at somebody and said, don't tell everybody all your business. <laughs> Y'all didn't need to tell everybody everything. Look at somebody and said, don't tell everybody everything you did. Boaz, why? Boaz, well, real early. He said, before you go, let me give you something. Gave us some extra wheat. Six old. 
Because we give a seven, the seven is what? The number of completion. We ain't gonna have seven to the night we met me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you six as a sign. That's right. Ruth went back to Naomi. Naomi said, all right now. <laughs> said, don't worry, we ain't gonna handle this thing today. <laughs> Go home and read the rest of the story and read what happened. To make a long story short, Ruth and Boaz had a son named Obed. That's right. Obed had a son named Jesse. Yeah, that's right. Jesse had a son named David. Yeah. And the Lord Jesus is called the son of David yeah. because Ruth was his great, 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 great yeah. grandma. That's right. That's right. That's right. I don't know who this is for. But I'm doing what the Lord told me. Ruth strategized about her relationship. Ruth took initiative to form the relationship. And Ruth asked Boaz to marry her. That's right. And this is the point. Women don't be afraid to pursue relationship. Women don't be hesitant to think it through and strategize. Strategize. <laughs> Women, don't be afraid to ask for what you want. Sometimes you ain't get what you wanted because you never asked for it. That is true. I had a deacon in here came and asked me for some money. I said, how much you want? She said, whatever you want to give me, I gave her a dollar. I said, I'm going to tell you the sad thing. If you had said, I want a hundred dollars, here's the hundred, I was going to give it to you. But because you didn't have faith enough to ask, you get a dollar. She said, oh no, give me a hundred. I said, too late, baby. Learn a lesson. That's right. So something happened later on. She came back. She said, can I have some money? I said, how much you want? She said, a thousand. <laughs> I said, good, you got the lesson. Amen, gave her ten dollars. <laughs> now let me issue a warning. When I talk like this, some people take it wrong. That's right. Yeah. Don't rush out of here and ask the first man you think is fine to be in a relationship with you. That is not what I'm saying. <laughs> Let me give you one. Don't call me after service and say, Pastor Taylor, you said it, but I've been looking at you a long time, and I think we need to get it on. No, no, no. God will take care of me. You ain't talking about me. Give you one. Except if your strategy doesn't work out. Ruth had a strategy, but it was based on incorrect facts. She thought Boaz was the nearest kin. He wasn't. It could have stopped right there. Boaz could have said, no, I'm not interested. Boaz had to get the permission of this other man, and the other man could have said, shoot, I get the land and that young girl too? Bring it on. <laughs> Somebody understand. It could have fell apart right then. Except if what you want and dream about does not happen. Except that and move on. Right. Stop pining. Right. Pining over some man from 10 years ago. He ain't thinking about you. Right. He gone on to mess up other women's life. Right. If God let one door close, he'll open another. Sometimes when the door closed, God is saving you yeah. from a faith that you don't see coming. They asked one woman, they said, why didn't you keep dating that man? She said, well, I don't know. It's just something about him. Come to find out he was a serial killer. Uh, what's the preppy killer? I forget his name. The preppy killer. Chambers. He's a very handsome fellow. Very well spoken. He knew how to trap him, kill 20, 30 women. Most of them he went with because he was a good looking guy. But when that relationship broke up, that was God saving her. That's right. Can I go ahead and talk? <laughs> Whatever this is for. Women, understand this. Don't close the door to opportunity. Don't close the door to initiative. Don't close the door to love. Women, remember this. You mature faster than men. Yes, yes they do. Women are often wiser and stronger and make more money than men. Yes. That's hard for men to deal with. Yes. That's hard yes. for the average man to deal with. 
I went out with a woman once, and I was, I told her I bought it first, because I wanted to see what she ordered, because all we had cash in my pocket, I had no cards at all. And I had to make sure I ordered something under her, so I could pay for it. And she ordered something, and then I ordered like a salad. Because <laughs> that way I could pay and leave the tip and not wash dishes. And so at the end, when the bill came, she pulled out her portfolio. Four gold cards, three platinum cards. As bad as I thought I was, I was intimidated. Because here I am, trying to make sure I got enough money for them. Can I talk? Can I tell the truth? Y'all want me to tell you something? <laughs> women can tolerate more pain than men. But the question for women is, woman, do you have faith in God? Yes. The question for women is, woman, will you be obedient to God? Yes. Now, the man might not be the best looking man. Some of y'all waiting for Denzel. What's that British man? It just helped. He just helped. Huh? <laughs> Somebody called him real quick. But just like all them girls back in the day was in love with Michael Jackson. It never happened. He might not be the smartest man. He might not make a lot of money. But what is your heart's desire? And what is the will of God? How many women I said I was going to tell you about? Second woman is Susie Hyde. You've heard me mention Susie Hyde. She was a mentor to my mother. Susie Hyde was in some church, and the church broke up. The church split, and Susie Hyde was the head of one of the factions. And she knew my mother from the Bethlehem district of the Progressive National Baptist Convention in Chicago. And she called my mother. She said, hey, so ain't your brother preaching? My mother said, yes, he is. She said, why don't you call your brother and ask him if he'd come and preach for these people? She came, she called her brother, Reverend James F. Jordan. He preached. And Sister Hyde said, we want you to be our pastor. He said, oh no, God called me to be an evangelist. She looked at him. She said, okay. But the Lord told me to ask you to be the pastor. He said, well, oh no, the Lord told me to be an evangelist. She said, go and pray about it three or four days. Come back. In three or four days, he came back and agreed mm -hmm. to be the pastor. And they started living hope. Mm. So when they write the history, they had to rewrite the history because they just said, they, they wrote the history like such and such Reverend James of Jordan started living hope. That wasn't the history. Mm -hmm. The history was when that other church broke up. And Susie Hyde, who didn't have any office, mm -hmm. but her, <coughs> they called a sister, that was it. She wasn't even she wasn't she was a missionary, but they didn't call a missionary back in the Baptist church. They called a sister. She held those people together. She prayed with them. She talked to them. She got them a pastor. And really, she's the founder of the church. Mm -hmm. Can I go ahead and talk? Uh -huh. She was interested in youth development. She had a group that my mother was in called the Young Women's Circle. She had a group that all of us kids were in called the Baptist Training Union. Susie Hyde told my mother, you have to develop your son. Put him in the King Solomon contest. So he'll learn how to march with a little uniform and stand up in front of people. You have to learn how to develop your son. Give him an Easter part. Rose are red, violets are blue, Jesus rose, and you will too. <laughs> Put him in the art talk contest so he learn how to talk. Mm -hmm. My mother's like, what is it? She was like, no, this is what you need to do to develop your son. Mm -hmm. So I was in art talk contest for a long time, learning how to stand in front of people and speak. Susie Hyde. When I got baptized at age nine, she went and told my mother, she said, he's going to be a priest. My mother said, oh, no. And she knew some priests that part a lot. And Susie Hyde said, you can open up all you want to, Hazel. That boy is going to be a preacher, nine years old. When I was 12 and got saved, she came and told me. My mother told me, but then she came and told me. She said, you're going to be a preacher. I said, I don't want to be a preacher. It ain't too much fun being a preacher. <laughs> She said, you're going to be a preacher. Have any of you all, I'm going to close, but I don't know if any of you all know people from the South who moan. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. Especially in church. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. No matter what was going on, we didn't have praise like we do. We had, we had old Baptist stuff. 
came to Jesus. He said, Jesus, you're a good teacher. What's the greatest commandment? Jesus said, you read the law. What does the law say? The lineage gave something. The law said, well, the greatest commandment is love the Lord God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Yes. Jesus said, that's it. that's it. That's the greatest commandment to love. Yes. It's not just thou shalt not, but it's thou shalt love. Yes. Can I go ahead and talk? Yes. And he said, the second one is just like that. Love your neighbor just like you love yourself. Uh -huh. love. So don't worry. Where your adventure in love is going to take you. That's right. Because you are love. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you. With all your faults, women, with all your failures, sister, with all your limitations, girl, with all that has happened to you, you are love. I want every woman here to just put your arms around yourself and say, I am love. I'll squeeze yourself. Say, I am love. Oh, somebody else wants to say, ooh, let's just squeeze yourself like that. Ooh. No matter what your earthly father did or didn't do, your heavenly father says, you are mine. No matter what your earthly father, no matter how he started off, your heavenly father said, when you walk through the fire, you won't be burned. When you go through the waters, they will not overwhelm you and drown you. When you go through trouble, you won't be there by yourself because you are mine. I gave up everything for you. Girl, when nobody else is there, nobody else calls your name. Girl, you belong to me. There's no man around. God says, I am your protector. There's no man around God says, I will sustain you. There's no man around God says, I will strengthen you. And your God will never leave you nor forsake you. You are love. Look at three people telling you, you are love. You are love. You close Women's History Month as I close this sermon. Your adventures in love. I don't know where it's going to take you. Hallelujah. I never thought I'd be in Brooklyn, but here I am. Yeah. I never thought I'd have to run to Chicago back and forth, but that's what love dictates. And you know what? Hallelujah. Wherever love calls, there's, there's, a, there's a record. Uh, I drove to New York from Chicago with two of my friends. And uh, y'all know my friend Michael Hickson. He had a girlfriend named Tony. And there was a record out by Atlantic Star. When love calls, you better answer. There's one of the records they play every five minutes. They must have been paying something. And so this girl, Michael's girlfriend, changed the words. She said, when Tony calls, you better answer. And so we drove from Chicago to New York singing, when Tony calls, you better answer. And she, we sang, she sang it so much, we all started singing. Well, when Jesus calls, you better answer. But the thing that I want to leave you with is your adventures in love. Wherever it takes you, make sure you show love to God. A lot of people, hallelujah, they can't love because they don't love God. Somebody said, well, how do I show my love for the Savior? First of all, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is there. Don't you think God is hurt when you wake up and do everything you got to do and God is just an afterthought? God got to be the first thought in your mind because you love him. Somebody said, how do I show my love for the Savior? Well, serve God. Hallelujah. Go to work for God. Do something before, do something for somebody where you don't get any credit from. Yeah, right. Do something for somebody else where God gets the glory. Yeah. I went in a store in Chicago at night. Hallelujah. I went into a greasy spoon. Hallelujah. To get some fish. And while I was getting fish, a man came up with some towels. And then he said, man, I got towels. And then I said, I needed some towels. He was playing my mother's house. And he said, how much time? He said, you get $5 for this roll. I said, give me the roll, man. And then the Lord said, he stole them towels. And then I said, brother, did you steal these towels? He said, yeah, man, what you think? How you think they found out? And then I said, man, I can't. I, can't. I said, give my money back. I can't. He said, man, he said, I'm sorry, but you got the towel, brother. I got the money. And so then he said, but you know what, man? I want some food. And the Lord said, buy this Negro dinner. And I was like, Lord, this Negro just got me in his mind. stole the goods. And the Lord said, buy him. Some food, and you know I brought that man then We start talking about God. We start talking about faith. We start talking about life. And at the end, he almost hugged me. I wouldn't let him. You know, I don't know, brother. Just, 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 
we love is good enough. Hallelujah. But in the end, hallelujah, when you show your love for somebody, God is going to be glorified. Yes. Everybody here, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, yes. let your light shine yes. so, that so that someone sees your good works yes. and glorifies your Father. Yes. Look on the other side and tell somebody, neighbor, yes. if you love him, yes. serve him. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Say, neighbor, neighbor. if you love him, you love serve, him. serve him. Now, we ask the question, how do I show my love for the Savior? Well, y'all know what I'm going to say. And you know how I'm going to end my sermon. Because I end them the same way. I end them praising God. And I want to say, if you love him, go ahead and praise him. Look at your neighbor, said neighbor. If you love him, you ought to praise him. Look on the other side, said neighbor. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noonday. Praise him when the sun goes down. Is there anybody here that loves the Lord? Is there anybody here remember when God brought you out? Anybody remember when God saved your life? Anybody remember when God healed your body? Stand up and give God praise. Is there anybody here that know how good God really is? He made a way when there seemed to be no way. He woke you up this morning, clothed in your right mind. Anybody here? I felt like you were going to go crazy, but you still got your right mind. Somebody put your hand together and praise him. Come on, tell him, thank the Lord. I still got my right mind. Thank you, Lord. When I was in the storm, you were a shelter in a time of storm. This is the time you can show some love for God.
Because he loves you. If nobody else loves you, 